that. So now we've got our amplifier coming along, but we still need to put in the capacitors and the diode. So I like to put in the diode first. Um, it's probably the easiest. You can see here, as with any diode, one lead is shorter than the other. And that lead is going to go along the flat side here. Um, it's very important you get that lined up correctly because if it's going the wrong way, it won't pass power through it and it won't work. That I kind of like to bend those out a little bit just to hold it in place while I solder it. So now that that's in, put the leads. And then we're going to put in the two power capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors. And there are these two round ones here. And they're kind of blue with a white stripe. And you'll notice one of them has a shorter lead, too. And that's the negative lead. But you can also see with this giant minus sign and the white stripe. So on here, you just want to make sure that the negative lead is not in the positive section. There's actually a little plus on C4 and C3. So you want to make sure the longer lead goes into that plus. So you want to put them in. These actually fit in really nicely. They actually kind of like friction fit in there. So you can see both of them in place there. And then just solder those up like we've done everything else. leads. So now we got those in place and we got the leads clipped on the back. So the next thing I like to install is the volume knob, the potentiometer and switch. And so that you just want to make sure, you know, it lines up before you really push it in there and it'll kind of spring clip in there and, and it holds itself in place, which is pretty nice because it makes it easy to solder. Um, just make sure you don't short any of the pins. Okay, so now that that's in, go to the next step, which is the signal capacitors. And they're these little red guys. And you can see that there's actually a spot on C2 and C5 for plus and minus. But because these are film capacitors, they don't have any kind of polarity. So we can put them in whatever way we want. And they're, they're slightly, I actually upgraded these from a different capacitor. These are much better, though. So they actually kind of, you don't want to push it in too far that it's going to break it, but it's kind of nice because they actually sort of hold themselves in with the friction. So you can see I kind of got them loosely in there like so. And then, I wish I'd focus. So now I'm just going to solder those in. And then clip the leads. OK. 
Okay. So now we are ready to put our op amp in, but I'm going to have I'm going to recommend testing this first and make sure we're getting the correct power supply. So, oh, first we actually have to put this battery connector in. So we got our battery connector. You can see the little plus and minus down here in the corner. And red goes to plus, black goes to minus. It's pretty simple. Make sure you don't reverse this polarity because it would be bad. Solder that in place. Right. So now we want to make sure that this is working correctly. And in order to do that, what you need to do is hook up a battery and make sure you hook it up the correct way. And then we're going to use a multimeter. To check the voltage in the op amp socket. Because we want to make sure our op amp is getting the plus and minus four and a half it's supposed to from the power supply circuit. Okay, so I got it on nine volts now. You can see here's my bench supply. So I'm going to hook that up to the battery connector. And then what you want to do is you're going to go, when you're looking at it, with the notch facing forward, so the notch is facing this direction. We're going to look at the top right and the top left. Oh, yeah, you got to turn your switch on or else it won't work, that's why. So, now you'll see that the red LED comes on when you turn the switch. So you got to turn it on. And then, you want to, using your negative, okay, if you use your negative in the top left and positive in the top right, you should get 4.5 volts roughly. I got 4.48. And then if you go down to the, take the red, the positive, to the bottom left, you should get negative roughly the same voltage. I got negative 4.47. And then if you go top right to bottom left, you should have a difference of 9 volts. Um, you know, the polarity depends on which one you put in the top right. but And that's how you check that it's powered correctly. And so then we want to turn it off, disconnect our power. Now we're going to put in our, our IC socket. And when you get these from the factory, they're kind of bent outward a lot. Um, if this is really bad at focusing, but... They bend out quite a bit, and so you, you want to, they don't always fit in these sockets perfectly, or when you line them up, they kind of almost stick out too wide. And so what I like to do is just very, very lightly, you want to be really careful when you do this. I'll put one side against the table, and then I'll take something straight, and preferably something that's not going to hurt it static-wise. You can actually even take like a circuit board or something. And I just kind of give it a light inward bend. And that usually makes it easier to plug in. And then we want to make sure we line up the notch. There's a little notch on one side with the one on the board here. And you want to make sure before you put any downward force on this that you got all your your pins going in because you don't want to bend them and ruin it. See, like I've still got too much outward force, so I'm gonna see if I can get this to go in just a little bit more. And then put that in there. And once you seat it, it will look like this. And that's now it's complete. So if you have any errors, some things to check for. You want to make sure you're not shorting any connections. And 
Also, make sure your op amp's in correctly. Your battery connector's got the right polarity, and you want to also double check that all your parts are in the right location.